Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. We've got a little bit of a different project going here today. We're going to do some uh, complex milling. Semi-complex milling. Uh, this is one of the leveling screws from the G&L and they're supposed to be made with a spherical surface on the end of them. So we've got a radius on here. And then it's supposed to sit on washers that are flat where they sit on the floor and then they're spherical and thus any alignments that uh, are out when this draws down it doesn't try to torque it over and uh, deflect you know to just draw it into the washer and it self aligns basically so it's a, it's a self aligning bushing. I don't have a radius turner for my lathe so I'm going to cut this spherical shape on the mill. So the first thing I need to do is kind of determine uh, what radius is on here. So I'm going to take it in there to the optical comparator and see if it can't kind of estimate what that is. And uh, so let's go take a look at that and then I'll get this machine set up and we'll see if it can cut this successfully do some uh, spherical milling. That's a bit of an interesting thing. I don't know I've seen anybody do that before on YouTube, so that should be a good one. Okay, so I don't think it sh shows up real good on this camera. It's uh, too dark in here, but you can make out the thread here on the bolt. And I've got the, the radius out here lined up. And it's Pretty much right on the edge of this chart. So, thank you. Man, you can see the grid lines on there, but you can't read them. So, I'll, uh, I'll turn the lights back on and see what this says. Okay, so here's our formula for setting this up. We got the cutter diameter. Divided by twice the desired radius is equal to the sine of the angle to set the cutter head. So we got four inch cutter divided by two times six radius, and it's about 19 degrees. It's close to 19 and a half, but we're gonna go with 19 because this cutter is probably a little bit less than four inch, so that'll help to increase the radius. So we'll give that a try and see what it looks like. So I'm going to get this set up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that went perfect. It didn't work at all. Uh, I don't know if my radius measurement's wrong. Uh, like I said I don't have any radius gauges to compare it to. Uh, it's hard to tell on an optical comparator. So I could have butchered that. Or maybe that formula I used wasn't quite right. But... Uh, According to the book, I got it out of it was. Anyway, so I've completed one of my not so favorite tasks here. And I've got the rotor table up in the mill. And just in case anybody wants to know, in case they need to make these later, I've got this head set at 60 degrees with a two inch cutter. And it's cutting a radius that looks like it matches pretty good. I've done one, so. I'm going to let you watch the second one here. Um, needed a low profile height in order to clear my cutter here, especially when I got smaller diameters. So what I've done is just taken uh, regular clamps and I've turned them around and I'm using the, the ledges to catch the plates and hold them down. So they're pulling down and they're locked in good. So this should hold it in place and give me good clearance. Might be a trick for you sometime you can use uh, for setups. I, I don't do much vice work, so this is kind of the way I'm used to holding stuff. So I'm going to fire the mill up so the sound will quick because you won't be able to hear anything with it running. And uh, show you cutting one of these. Okay, so battery died last time. Third time's the charm. Uh, got this fixture down here with my toe clamps 
Uh, catching them on the ledges works good. Keep this low profile. Uh, decided that I want to run my cutter at uh, 42 degrees. Uh, seems to be a good match, so I'm guessing it must be an inch and a half radius on that, not three inch. So, may I, I have to look, I don't know if I had a, if the lens is a 5X instead of a 10X, or I just didn't read it right, but anyway, the math part should be correct, assuming you actually know what radius you're working with. But, uh, let's get this mill fired up and cut this thing.
there it is. Got a pretty good finish on it. Okay, here maybe you can see better. Got that cool looking swirl pattern in there. So, got a nice little ball socket. There's our less than perfect screw end where it's been on flat and they've damaged it. But, uh, fits in there nice. And you can just rock that dude around wherever. So, that way when this is When this is on the ground, if there's misalignment, you know, if the mill's sitting like this, if the concrete's not level, when this pulls down, it's, it doesn't try to twist it. Whereas if this was on a flat ledge, it's going to try and straighten the bolt. So when it tries to straighten the bolt, it's going to put twist in the machine and make it inaccurate. So with this method here, it's free to move and self-align when it's drawn up. So, got like 40 of these to make. Not too bad, it doesn't take terribly long to, to do one of these. I mean, you just watch that real time, so. That, thought that was an interesting deal. You don't see, uh, this is what I would call complex work for a manual machine. You don't see a lot of uh, spheres milled or hemispheres so that's it thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i'll catch y'all later <laughs>